The searing heat of alien suns did nothing to thaw the cold rage boiling inside Captain Nolan Johnson as he entered the Ferengi tribunal chamber. He had given these upstart aliens one warning for violating human space. Now their worlds would burn. Nolan stood rigid, his face an impassive granite mask, as the tribunal doors sealed behind him with a hiss. Lead Inquisitor Korvac glared at him from the risen podium, beady eyes glinting with malice and greed. The chamber bustled with brightly dressed Ferengi, all chattering loudly, waving data pads detailing exorbitant fines and sanctions they hoped to levy against humanity. But Nolan felt no fear, only a grim sense of purpose. He knew the truth the Ferengi wanted buried. This trial was a sham, an attempt to weaken Earth to make it bleed latinum before the real war began. The scans his ship had taken of the so-called unarmed freighter would reveal the Ferengi's duplicity. As Korvac began his blustering speech, Nolan stood ramrod straight, not a flicker of emotion on his chiseled features. The Federation had to succeed here today. If the Ferengi got their way, it would mean ruin and death for billions of humans across the star systems that looked to Nolan for protection from alien threats. And that was something Nolan would never allow, no matter the odds stacked against him. The Ferengi tribunal chamber doors slid open with an ominous hiss as Nolan stomped out, fists balled at his sides. Deckard hustled to keep pace with Nolan's long strides as they made their way through the twisting corridors back to the docking bay. Oh, you did good in there, Captain, Deckard said, slightly out of breath. Showed a lot of restraint, considering. Nolan grunted. Restraint? I wanted to leap over that podium and teach that smug little troll a lesson about exorbitant fines. I don't doubt it. But you didn't, and that's what matters. Deckard lowered his voice. The Ferengi won't let this go, you know. You humiliated Korvac today, made him look like a fool in front of the whole tribunal. Good, Nolan growled. No, not good. You just painted a big old target on your back. Deckard grabbed Nolan's arm, forcing him to stop and face him. Like it or not, your actions today have consequences. For you and the Federation. Nolan yanked his arm free. I did what I had to do. I know that. The Admiralty knows that. But to the Ferengi, to the other species out there, you're a lightning rod now, Nolan, a symbol of human aggression. Nolan opened his mouth to argue, but Deckard cut him off. Which is why I'm reassigning you. The Admiralty needs you on a diplomatic mission to the Galactic Council. We need you to argue for expanding the quarantine around the Dregnar occupied on Terris system. Nolan barked a humorless laugh. The Council. You really think they'll listen to me after today? They'll listen because they have to. Your testimony about the Ferengi arming the Dregnar is crucial. The Onteris system is rich in Quantium-40. Half the Council species would kill to get their hands on that mineral. They're not going to let a little thing like a quarantine stop them. Deckard sighed. That's why we need your first-hand account of what the Dregnar did to our colonies, with those quantium-fueled weapons. Make them understand the cost of inaction. Nolan shook his head, but said nothing as they boarded his ship and rocketed away from the Ferengi station. They were barely clear of the docking clamps when the sensor operator called out. Sir, I'm detecting a cloaked ship shadowing us. Looks like a Ferengi warship. Nolan swore under his breath. Transmit a level three warning burst. Let's see if they feel like tangling with us now that their scheming little ringleader isn't here to pull the strings. The comm officer nodded, and seconds later reported, They're changing course, sir, angling away at high speed. Typical Ferengi bluster, Deckard muttered. I'll talk until you stand up to them. But Nolan didn't relax until they were docked at the sprawling Galactic Council station. The reception, if one could call it that, from the other council member delegations was decidedly frosty as they made their way to the central chamber. Nolan took his place at the speaker's podium, back straight, jaw set as he met the openly hostile glares of a dozen different species. He began his address, laying out the evidence implicating the Ferengi in the Dregnar attacks, highlighting the savage brutality inflicted on human colonies with quantium-powered weapons. 
He was halfway through his holographic presentation when the Dregnar ambassador leapt to his feet. This is slander, the scaled alien shouted, stabbing a clawed finger at Nolan. The human has no proof. The Ferengi ambassador was quick to join in. The evidence is clearly fabricated. The human has already demonstrated his capacity for violence and murder against Ferengi citizens. The Council must sanction Earth immediately. The chamber erupted into chaos, a dozen species shouting to be heard. Nolan gripped the podium edges, knuckles white, as the Council speaker pounded his gavel for order. We will have a vote, the speaker intoned as the tumult died down all in favor of imposing sanctions on Earth pending an impartial investigation. Nolan watched in disbelief as appendages of all kinds raised around the chamber. The vote was nearly unanimous. A recess is called, the speaker said, slamming his gavel with a note of finality. Nolan stormed out into the corridor, Deckard close on his heels. He was so incensed he almost ran headlong into Korvac. The Ferengi grinned up at him, flanked by a pair of hulking Dregnar guards. You should have accepted my judgment, human, Korvac said silkily. Now your whole pathetic species will pay the price for your hubris. Nolan snarled. You're siding with killers and slavers. For what profit? Credits are thicker than blood, Korvac sneered. But go ahead, keep enforcing your borders. Every freighter you destroy costs you allies. The Ferengi turned to leave, but Nolan's next words stopped him cold. It was bait, Nolan said slowly, realization dawning. The freighter at Aldani? You sacrificed your own people. Korvac looked back, a smirk playing over his bulbous features. A Ferengi would have taken the bribe. You humans are so predictable with your principles. Nolan lunged, but Deckard and the Dregnar guards held him back. He could only glare, seething, as Korvac sauntered off down the corridor, laughter echoing in his wake. Nolan stalked back to his ship, Korvac's mocking words echoing in his head. He slammed a fist against the airlock control panel, the sharp pain doing nothing to dull the rage boiling inside him. The Ferengi had played him for a fool, manipulating him into destroying that freighter. And now Earth would pay the price. He stormed onto the bridge, ignoring the startled looks from his crew. Get me a secure channel to Admiral Deckard now. The comm officer scrambled to comply as Nolan paced, his boots ringing against the deck plates. Deckard's face flickered onto the viewscreen, his brows knitting in concern at Nolan's expression. Captain, what's happened? It's a setup, Nolan ground out. The trial, the sanctions, all of it. The Ferengi are working with the Dregnar to isolate Earth, to weaken us before they strike. Deckard leaned forward, his face grim. Are you certain? Korvac all but admitted it to my face. We need to fortify our borders, Admiral. Prepare for all-out war. The Ferengi Dregnar Alliance is coming for us. Deckard nodded slowly. I'll alert Earth Command. We'll... The proximity alarm blared, cutting him off. Nolan whirled to the sensor station. Report! Multiple contacts dropping out of warp, sir. Dregnar warships and Ferengi destroyers. They're on an intercept course. Nolan swore. Battle stations, prepare to transmit the ship's log to the nearest Earth outpost. The bridge erupted into controlled chaos as the crew rushed to their posts. Nolan turned back to Deckard, his face set. You have your warning, Admiral. Nolan out. The view screen went dark as a harsh voice crackled over the comm. Earth vessel, this is the Dregnar warship Carvax. Surrender immediately for your crimes against the Ferengi people. Nolan's lip curled. Carvax, this is Captain Nolan Johnson of the Earthship Dauntless. I'll see you in hell. He slashed a hand across his throat, signaling to cut the transmission. Arm quantum torpedoes. Fire a full spread as soon as they're in range. The Dauntless shuddered as a barrage of torpedoes leapt from its launch tubes, streaking towards the approaching enemy fleet. Dregnar ships exploded under the onslaught, their hulls shattering like glass. But more kept coming, pounding the Dauntless with plasma fire. Sparks rained from shattered conduits as the ship bucked and heaved. Shields down to forty percent! 
the tactical officer shouted over the din. Hull breaches on decks five and seven. Keep firing, Nolan roared. We have to hold them off long enough to... A bone-jarring impact threw him from his chair. He staggered upright, blood streaming from a gash on his forehead. Damage report. Boarding pods, sir. They're cutting through the hull on all decks. The deck lurched under Nolan's feet. He could hear the distant rattle of gunfire, the screams of the dying. The Dregnar were slaughtering their way through the ship. He dragged himself to the comm station. Is the log transmitting? The officer nodded, her face pale. Yes, sir, but the Dregnar, they're almost to the bridge. Nolan gripped her shoulder. Keep transmitting, no matter what. He turned to face the bridge doors as a thunderous boom echoed through the ship. The Dregnar were breaching the final barricade. Nolan drew his sidearm, his remaining officers rallying around him. The doors exploded inward, smoke and flame billowing into the bridge. Dregnar shock troops surged through the gap, their weapons spitting fire. Nolan and his crew met them with a hail of bullets, the air thick with the stench of blood and cordite. But there were too many. One by one, Nolan's officers fell until only he remained, a lone figure standing amidst the bodies of the slain. The Dregnar closed in, their weapons trained on his heart. Nolan looked to the comm station, to the blinking light that told him the log was still transmitting. He smiled a bloody smile. From Earth with love, he said, and pressed the detonator in his hand. The Dauntless vanished in a blinding flash of light as its quantum core detonated, the antimatter explosion consuming the ship and the Dregnar vessels alongside it. Light years away in the command center of Earth's orbital defense network, Admiral Deckard watched the transmission from the Dauntless flicker and die. He bowed his head for a moment, grief and rage warring on his face. Then he straightened, his eyes hard as flint. Recall all ships, mobilize the fleet and get me the president. We have a war to fight. But as Earth girded itself for battle, the Galactic Council remained silent. No condemnation of the Dregnar's blatant aggression. No offer to lift the sanctions on Earth. The message was clear. Humanity would face this fight alone. In the days that followed, Earth's factories roared to life, churning out warships and weapons at a staggering pace, the full might of human industry and innovation bent towards a single purpose, survival. And on the eve of the Ferengi Dregnar invasion, Admiral Deckard broadcast a final message to the Galactic Council, his face hard and unyielding on every viewscreen. We gave you a warning after the Ferengi betrayal. Push us at your own peril. But now the Ferengi Dregnar Axis seeks to exterminate us, and you all stand idly by. So here is our final warning. If humanity falls, your worlds will burn. The transmission cut to black, leaving the council chambers in stunned silence, and in that silence the drums of war began to beat as Earth and its enemies prepared for a conflict that would shake the very stars. Grand Nagas Zek lounged on a plush divan, sipping from a jewel-encrusted goblet of Romulan ale, the lavish chamber deep within the Ferengi commerce planet Volus was a testament to his species' wealth and influence. He smirked as supreme overlord Krath of the Dregnar Imperium raised his own goblet in a mocking toast. To the imminent fall of Earth and the destruction of the human pestilence, Krath hissed, his forked tongue flicking out to taste the air. Zek chuckled, his bulbous head bobbing, and to the Galactic Council so easily manipulated, those fools played right into our hands. Indeed, Krath agreed. Framing the humans for the destruction of that Ferengi freighter was a masterstroke. It turned the council against them, isolated them. Zek preened. It was a small sacrifice for the greater good of profit. The humans have been a thorn in our side for too long, with their meddlesome morality and interference in our business dealings. Once their homeworld falls, their colonies will be ripe for the taking. The Dregnar will enslave their people, and the Ferengi will plunder their resources, a mutually beneficial arrangement. The two leaders clinked their goblets together, savouring the sweet taste of impending victory, but their celebration was cut short by the abrupt entrance of a harried-looking Ferengi aide. My lords, 
the aide panted, wringing his hands. Urgent news from the front. The humans have launched a surprise attack. Zek sat up, his brow furrowing. What? That's impossible. Our blockade around their system is impenetrable. The aide shook his head frantically. A human stealth fleet slipped through. They've taken out our communication hubs behind the lines. Our ships can't coordinate. Krath surged to his feet, his scales rippling with rage. What of our main armada? Surely they can crush this impudent assault. The aide blanched. The humans. They ambushed our fleet from behind. They've trapped our forces between their ships and the defenses of the Sol system. We're losing ships faster than we can count. Zek and Krath rushed to the chamber's main viewscreen, watching in growing horror as the live feeds from the battle played out. Human ships, sleek and deadly, danced through the Ferengi Dregnar formations, their weapons cutting through shields and hull plating like a plasma torch through butter. The once proud armada, the assembled might of two galactic powers, crumbled under the relentless human assault. Their ships, unable to coordinate or retreat, fell one by one, reduced to expanding clouds of debris and frozen corpses. As the two leaders watched powerless, a final transmission cut through the chaos. The stern face of Admiral Deckard, the human who had orchestrated this devastating counter-strike, filled the screen. To the Galactic Council, Deckard intoned, his voice cold as the void. You stood by while the Ferengi and Dregnar sought to enslave and exterminate us. In your silence, you are complicit in their crimes. Zek and Krath looked at each other, a growing sense of dread settling in their guts. The human race will not go quietly into the night, Deckard continued. We will fight to our last breath, and if we fall, we will make sure our enemies fall with us. You could have been our allies, but you chose to be bystanders. So watch now as our worlds burn, and remember, you were warned. The transmission cut out, leaving the chamber in stunned silence, and then the report started flooding in. Human forces, their positions no longer a secret, were launching massive orbital strikes on Ferengi and Dregnar core worlds. Planet after planet, seats of industry and commerce, strongholds of military might fell dark as the human weapons rained down from the skies. Continents burned, cities were reduced to molten slag, billowing clouds of ash blotted out the sun. Zek collapsed into his seat, his head in his hands, as the aide's frantic voice continued to narrate the unfolding devastation. Krath could only stare at the viewscreen, his eyes wide, as he watched his empire crumble. In the end, the human fleets were a shattered remnant, and Earth itself was consumed by the fires of war. But not before humanity exacted a terrible toll on those who had sought to destroy them. The Ferengi Alliance, its commerce planets in ruins, fell into economic collapse and civil strife. The Dregnar Imperium, its subject races rising in rebellion, fractured into a thousand bickering factions. And the Galactic Council, whose inaction had allowed this war to ignite, found itself ripped apart as member species seceded in disgust, no longer willing to be associated with the body that had stood by and let the galaxy burn. In the aftermath, the surviving human colonies struggled to endure in a hostile galaxy. Former allies and trade partners turned them away, fearful of inviting retribution for aiding the species that had unleashed such devastation. The once shining beacon of Earth, the birthplace of humanity, was reduced to a cautionary tale, whispered in the dark corners of seedy spaceport bars, a warning to those who would dare to stand against the status quo. But even in the depths of their despair, the humans held fast to a flicker of hope. In secret meetings and hidden bases, the embers of defiance still glowed, for the humans knew that as long as even one of them still drew breath, the chance remained to reignite the flames of revolution and forge a new future from the ashes of the old. The shadow's bane drifted through the endless expanse of space, its hull battered and scarred from countless skirmishes. Captain Ezra Riker stood on the bridge, his weathered face illuminated by the flickering lights of the command console. He'd fought in the war that consumed Earth, watched as humanity's homeworld burned. Now, decades later, he led a ragtag crew of survivors and exiles, forever seeking a safe haven in a hostile galaxy. 
Captain, we're picking up a distress signal, Sanvi, the ship's comms officer, called out. It's coming from an uncharted planet in the Zeta Quadrant. Ezra leaned forward, his brow furrowed. Uncharted? That's not possible. The Galactic Council has maps of every system. Not this one, sir. It's not on any of our charts. Ezra's gut told him to be cautious, but the distress signal pulsed on the screen, a desperate plea for help. Set a course, he ordered. Let's see what we're dealing with. Has the Shadow's Bane entered orbit? Ezra stared at the planet below. It was a desolate world, its surface a patchwork of jagged mountains and vast sandy plains. But there, nestled in a crater, was a structure that looked decidedly human. Take us down, Ezra said, a sense of unease growing in his chest. The ship touched down near the base, and Ezra led a landing party to investigate. They entered the facility cautiously, weapons drawn. But instead of enemies, they found rows upon rows of cryopods, each containing a human in stasis. What the hell is this place? Ezra muttered. I can answer that, a disembodied voice said echoing through the chamber. An AI avatar materialized, its form that of a woman in a lab coat. Welcome, Captain Riker. I am Dr. Amelia Saunders, or at least a digital copy of her consciousness. Ezra lowered his rifle. What is this place? This is Project Phoenix, a contingency plan launched by Earth's government before the war. Our mission was to preserve human civilization in case of annihilation. Ezra's crew exchanged glances, a mix of hope and disbelief on their faces. How many people are here? Ezra asked. Ten thousand. Scientists, engineers, artists, leaders. The best and brightest of humanity selected to rebuild our society far from the reach of the galactic powers. Ezra's mind raced with the implications. A hidden human colony, free from the oppression of the Ferengi and Dregnar. It was almost too good to be true. But before he could respond, an alarm blared through the base. Captain! Sanvi's voice crackled over the comms. A Dregnar scout ship just dropped out of warp. They're heading straight for us. Ezra cursed. They must have been followed. Back to the ship now! They raced back to the Shadow's Bane as the Dregnar ship screamed into the atmosphere. Ezra slid into the pilot's seat, his hands flying over the controls. Get the shields up and arm the plasma cannons! The human ship rose from the surface, its engines roaring. The Dregnar vessel opened fire, lances of energy slamming into the Shadow's Bane's shields. Ezra gritted his teeth as the ship shuddered under the onslaught. Shields at forty percent, Sanvi shouted. Hezra wrenched the ship into a sharp turn, trying to get a clear shot. The Dregnar ship matched his move, its superior technology evident. But Ezra had a lifetime of experience on his side. He feinted left, then pulled up hard, looping over the Dregnar ship. For a split second, its underbelly was exposed. Fire! Ezra roared. The Shadow's Bane's cannons erupted, searing beams of plasma ripping into the Dregnar hull. The enemy ship lurched, then exploded in a brilliant flash of light. Ezra slumped back in his seat, his heart pounding. They'd won, but at what cost? The Dregnar knew their location now. More ships would come, an endless tide of enemies seeking to eradicate the last remnants of humanity. He looked down at the planet, at the hidden base that held the hope of his species. If the Dregnar found it, they would slaughter every last human in those cryopods. Ezra couldn't let that happen. With a heavy heart, he made the call. Sanvi, open a channel to the base. Dr. Saunders' avatar appeared on the screen. Captain, what's happening? The Dregnar know we're here. More ships will come. You have to hide. Go deeper into cloaking. Don't let them find you. But what about you? What about the plan? Ezra closed his eyes. The plan has to change. We can't stay here, can't risk leading the Dregnar to your doorstep. You have to wait, bide your time, until the galaxy has forgotten about this place, until humanity is ready to rise again. Dr. Saunders' digital face was etched with sorrow. I understand we will wait, Captain, for as long as it takes. Ezra nodded. Initiate cloaking protocol, hide yourselves well. He acknowledged. 
Good luck, Captain. May the stars guide you. The screen went dark and Ezra turned to his crew. Set a course for deep space. We have to lead the Dregnar away from here. As the Shadow's Bane prepared to jump to warp, Ezra stared out at the stars. The weight of his decision hung heavy on his shoulders. He'd abandoned the last best hope for his species, left them to an uncertain fate on a forgotten world. But what choice did he have? The Dregnar would never stop hunting them, never rest until every last human was wiped from existence. At least this way there was a chance, a slim hope that someday, when the time was right, humanity could rise from the ashes and reclaim its place in the galaxy. Ezra thought back to the war, to the fiery defiance that had marked humanity's last stand. Had it been worth it? The cost had been staggering, billions of lives lost, Earth itself reduced to a smouldering ruin. Maybe they should have submitted to the galactic powers, accepted their place as a subject species. But no, Ezra shook his head. To submit would have been to lose their very identity, to forsake the spirit that made them human. Better to burn out than to fade away, to rage against the dying of the light. As long as even one human drew breath, the flame of resistance would never be extinguished. Ezra would make sure of that. He would keep fighting, keep searching for a new home, a place where humanity could rebuild and grow strong once more. The shadow's bane leapt into warp, vanishing into the void. It was a flickering torch in the darkness, a fragile vessel bearing the hopes and dreams of a shattered species. The road ahead was long and fraught with peril, but Ezra would not falter. For he carried a warning in his heart, a message to the uncaring stars themselves. Humanity might be broken, but it was not beaten. They would endure, and one day they would reclaim what was lost. And if the galaxy stood in their way, then it would burn as Earth had burned, until the very heavens trembled with the fury of humankind. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.